contact uh, reading selection pages 16 through 29. Overseas exploration captures the ideas and imaginations of Europeans. Europeans want access to more markets, especially the merchants. The merchants have a problem. The silk trade route has been closed uh, basically to the Europeans due to the fact that Muslims have taken it over and they don't like Christians, so they're not protecting them. So they need another way to get to their spices, and that is why they try to figure out another route to the Orient or to those spices. Advances in shipbuilding and navigation uh, led the Portuguese to be able to go along the west coast of Africa and establish trade. These, uh, these advances include the astrolabe, the magnetic compass, the caravel ship, the rudder, square and triangular uh, sails. I mean, they are able to move through the water, know where they are, uh, know where they're going. Um, and the two big trading countries are Spain and Portugal. They acquire various Atlantic islands. They set up sugar plantations there because sugar grows so well. Um, they have the natives work for them. And then when the natives eventually die by disease, African slaves <clears throat> take over. Columbus. Columbus was born in Genoa, Italy. Uh, so he is obviously Italian. He cannot get anybody to sponsor his voyage of what he says is the Western way to the Orient until he meets King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain. Um, the problem with his idea is that he misjudges the circumference of the world by more than half. He eventually makes it there, um, but he never realizes, even though he takes three voyages to the new world, quote unquote, he never realizes that he has actually found the new world uh, or opened up the new world to the rest of the world. He dies penniless. Um, he never capitalizes on his discovery. Um, here you can see some of the trade routes that he did. Uh, and um, Spain. Spain is the most well suited to take advantage of Columbus. Columbus's discovery of the New World. They come to the New World for the three G's, gold, God, and glory. The Reconquista has just happened, which is the throwing out of the Muslims out of Spain so they can say that they have uh, God as part of their justification for going to these places. They have a strong military. They want to spread Christianity throughout the world. So they are going to do that. They have all these soldiers that want glory. They want to be known. And so they <clears throat> they are going to go to the New World to make a name for themselves. Native populations, when the Spanish make it there, are decimated by disease. Smallpox is a killer. Um, it's the biggest one. Uh, but they are, the Spanish are, in search of gold. Um and they start on the islands and eventually by the early 1500s make it to mainland, what is known as New Spain or present day Mexico. Hernan Cortez uh, is a conquistador. He takes 600 men and lands on the coast of Mexico. Um, <coughs> he is able to conquer the Aztec Empire very quickly. He has a lot going for him. Uh, the Aztecs believed that their war god left and was going to come back. It was said that the war god would come back from the east. He would have a beard. He would have light skin, and he'd come in on a cloud. And so when Cortez has, a light, has light skin, comes from the east, has a beard, and comes in on a ship, these uh, individuals believe that he is Quetzalcoatl, the war god. Uh, he also ha can point a stick at somebody and it makes noise and they die. Uh, a gun. Uh, he can raise his arm and put it down and there's a loud noise, the firing of a cannon, and something explodes. And so he uses his military technology and advances to be able to take out the Aztecs. The three reasons why Cortez is successful is because of those techniques. Disease. And horses is a big one going along with those military technologies. But the third one is taking advantage of the other Native Americans. 
the Aztecs were made other Indian tribes around them pay a tribute of food, money, and people to be sacrificed to their gods every year. And so Cortez basically says, join us and you don't have to uh, deal with the Aztecs anymore. So Cortez rolls in with 600 people into Tenochtitlan. They get run out of there, but one of their men had smallpox. By the time they come back, about a third of the population's dead. Um, and they and then it's pretty easy for them to go right through. Here are the reasons why that was the list I just gave you. Forty percent of the population of central uh, Mexico died of smallpox in one year. Okay, it's something like two thirds of the population ends up passing away in a longer period of time, but forty percent dies in one year. The second conquistador you need to know, he goes on and takes on the Incan uh, Empire. His name is Francisco Pizarro. He shows up with 180 men, and he shows up in the middle of a civil war between two brothers. He chooses the side of Atahuapa, and he helps them win. He then takes Atahuapa prisoner and tells, him to, tells the people to bring all the gold and silver that they have in the, in the empire, and they will rele- he will release Atahuapa. Uh, He doesn't. He tells them they didn't give it all. They need to bring more. We're talking about 20 to 30 tons of gold and silver, millions upon millions of dollars of gold and silver. When they come back with a little bit more gold, he ends up killing Atahualpa. Some say strangle, some say cut it, slit his throat. Um, But he ends up taking over the Incan Empire and moving the capital from Cusco to Lima. So now the the Spaniards control all the way from the bottom of South America, all the way to uh, what is present day Mexico. The Spanish also uh, sponsor expeditions into what is present day Florida. Uh, They are looking for the fountain of youth. um, And then they find the Everglades and realize that they don't really want to be there. Uh, and they never find any gold or silver in the deserts of New Mexico and Arizona. So they kind of leave those areas alone for now. Um, then comes a period of time where the Native Americans get a voice from some priests who say, we need to treat them better. They need to be treated more humanely. Um, but just like anything, it only is very short-lived and the natives are again being taken advantage of. Gold and silver made Spain the richest and most powerful European state, but they get rid of all of it. Most of their gold and silver gets blown either by wasteful spending or by sending it to China for porcelain, silk, and tea. I mean, Spain just utterly screws this up. I mean, so bad. This is Tenochtitlan, uh, present-day Mexico City, and what it looked like when Cortez got there. Now, the next big thing is the Columbian Exchange. This is the transfer of plants, animals, and diseases from the old world to the new world and the new world to the old world. Um, The most catastrophic thing is all the diseases that come from the old world and go go from the old world to the new world and kill all the Native Americans. There's only one disease that goes from the new world to the old world, and that's syphilis, and that's from the conquistadors who have relations with the Native American women and then come back to Europe and have relations with their spouses or other women, and it spreads that venereal disease around. Um, The introduction of cattle, sheep, pigs, goats, and horses transform Native culture. Uh, They've never seen a horse before. They've never seen cattle before. Uh, Most of the Native Americans' words word for horse is big dog. Okay. So, um, these are momentous things. Um, wheat, uh, all the grains, all the fruit trees all come over from the old world to the new world and going from the new world to the old world. The big things are corn, potatoes, and beans. Potatoes grow so easily. It supplements the European diet really well. Um, if, Uh, You look up and Google search uh, a map of the Columbian Exchange. It'll show you all the stuff. We've only mentioned a few, but I suggest that you go on there and look at all the different things that get exchanged between the old world and the new world and the new world and the old world. Uh, If you see a chart in your book like this, uh, you should know it uh, for the quiz and for the test. So you should probably know that. There's all the listings, but you can see it in picture form 
online. Curiosity and confusion often marked early encounters between Europe and Native Americans. Uh, Europeans don't understand Indian spirituality and Indians don't understand Christianity. You want Indians are, you know, you want us to pray to a guy on a cross and a picture of a lady. That just doesn't make sense. Uh, there's three people in one God, the son and the Holy spirit all in one. That doesn't make any sense. So it's really confusing on a religious level, not only a religious level, but gender roles, European women stay at home and raise the children. Not that that's, you know, the, the hardest job in the world, but native American women are, doing everything. They're uh, taking care of the animals, taking care of the uh, planting and farming and taking care of the home. It's ridiculous. And the men just go get to do the fun stuff as hunting and fishing. Um, to get along peaceably, each side would have to adapt to these new cultures and new circumstances, but they don't. And they're both willing to fight for it, which becomes scary. Competition for a continent. This is between Portugal and Spain. Um, the Treaty of Tordesillas is a uh, treaty uh, brought forth by the Pope. He draws the line of demarcation, which gives Spain, North America, uh, South America, Central America, and the Caribbean, and gives Portugal, Brazil. Um, with the maps that he had, he probably did a pretty good job of putting it on there. Uh, but it gives Spain a whole lot more land when they realize how much the how much land they actually get the french explore north america uh, but they have failed attempts in canada carolina and florida um, religious strife delayed english activity in the new world henry the eighth i am i am remember he joins uh he starts his own church he wants his uh, marriage annulled uh, the pope will not do it so he creates the anglican church uh, when he dies, um, his sister takes over and she goes back to Catholicism and they try to kill all the Anglicans. Uh, when she dies, and this is a review from last year, uh, Elizabeth takes over and has peace amongst the Catholics and the Protestants. Um, and so a group known as the Puritans want to purify the church. Um, and then inside the Puritans is a group called the Separatists. And they think the only way you can purify it is separate from it. And those separatists are known as pilgrims. So that's kind of how the pilgrims come to be. Um, colonization patterns follow that of how they did in Ireland, but it's not going to work. Um, Sir Walter Raleigh sets up Roanoke uh, Colony and he gets them set up and then says, I got to go back and get supplies and go get more money and blah, 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 blah. And by the time he comes back, they're gone and we don't know what happened to them. Um, so it just proves that it's going to take a lot of money and a lot of time in order to make money on colonies in the new world. It's going to have to be, as far as the English are concerned, a long-term investment. And that's all I got for you, 16 through 29. Hopefully you got something out of the short lecture.